Welcome back to the Danny Wang Design Channel, where I go over some of my most memorable projects that I've designed and built. Today we're going over a recent favorite of mine, Digital Cascade. This project had a number of challenges throughout nearly every stage of the process, but with that came a lot of out-of-the-box thinking in designing and completing this sleek and modern backyard paradise. Before we get started, let's go over what the client requested. This client sent me a list of things that he wanted to implement in this build. More privacy, an outdoor kitchen, a fire pit, and a large pool with a spa. These are pretty standard requests, but now it's our job to turn this space into a unique experience. So how do we incorporate these requests into the yard? Let's check out the design that we came up with. The yard itself had an odd layout with the side yard being significantly bigger than the backyard. With that in mind, we made use of that and placed the large pool over there. At one end of the pool, there will be a large sunken fire pit, which will be a perfect place to have friends and family relax and enjoy the view. On the other side of the pool, we are going to have another smaller sunken fire pit that appears like it is inside the pool. Moving on to the outdoor cooking area, there was an open area right outside of the indoor kitchen, which I thought would be a perfect spot for an outdoor kitchen. We placed the outdoor kitchen here to help connect the inside of the house with the new backyard. Finally, the statement piece, the massive single piece back wall water feature. The property had this huge 100 foot curved wall and we wanted to turn that eyesore into a focal point. The design team and I came up with this single curved water wall that spans the whole yard and fills the air with the tranquil sounds of the cascade. In another video, I've gone more in depth with the design decisions I made with this yard, and you can check out that video on our YouTube channel or in the description below. Also, if you're liking the content that we're producing every week, consider subscribing so you know when we release a new video. With all that said, you might be wondering how we executed this design, we are going to show you step-by-step step how we completed this yard in this video. Let's start construction. We started off with an empty dirt lot, pretty standard for new construction. As always, we began by scheduling a soil test to make sure the ground was stable enough to build upon. Before the soil engineer could get to work, we needed to clear the weeds and overgrowth so they could access the soil. After the weeds had been cleared, the soil engineer ran their tests. We marked out where the major features would be, such as the pool walls, to help the excavation team ensure they dug in the right spots. Once that was completed, it was time to bring in the heavy machinery. For this yard, they used a few excavators to speed up the process before a team worked on the finer details. We dug out the pool and fire pit, as well as the water channel for the large back wall that was going to span the length of the yard. While they finished up on the excavation, we got started on the plumbing for all of the water features. Because of all the water we would be moving in this yard, we needed a lot of plumbing. Besides the wall, we also needed plumbing for the pool and hot tub, of course, but that's pretty standard. Now that we had the yard excavated and the plumbing figured out, it was time to move on to the next step. The next step was rebar. As you probably already know, rebar is crucial when working with concrete because it gives it stability and structure. Without rebar, the concrete would crack and fall apart over time. The rebar was laid down in a cross pattern generally offset by one foot to keep it efficient, effective, and sturdy. Speaking of effectiveness, the rebar wouldn't have done much if it had sunk to the bottom of the concrete, so they raised it up one, two inches above the ground to make sure that it would be in the center. Right as we were about to finish up, the client asked me if he could make a change to the design of the pool. He wanted to change the wall of the pool by the large fire pit to be a zero edge wall. Although not the largest change, it still set us back about a week because they needed to take out the rebar for that section and redo it with the changes in mind. Once they were finished with the design change, we could move on to the next step. Now that we finished up with the rebar, it was time for concrete. We didn't use the traditional cast hot test method for concrete as that would have taken too much time. We used a newer, quicker method called shotcrete. Shotcrete is a modern method of applying concrete mix to complex surfaces. The concrete mix is sprayed at a high velocity out of a hose which allows it to reach through the rebar and small crevices. This made it ideal for our situation since we had rather complex shapes in this pool design. Not only was it easier to apply, it was also significantly faster and required fewer people to operate. One shotcrete team could usually finish a standard sized pool in a day or two. From years of experience, we found out that we needed to water the cured concrete to help reduce the number of cracks that appeared. While my team was working on laying the concrete, we got the results back from the soil engineer. The soil that was under the pool was solid, but unfortunately the soil under the water wall was a different story. We were told that it was possible that the soil could shift over time, which would cause issues with our one-piece wall design. We were going to go back to the drawing board again and see if we could find a solution. 
Fortunately, we could continue work on everything else, and this gave us a chance to make some visual changes to the design and improve on the previous version. While we worked on the redesign of the wall, we got started on the outdoor kitchen. We had some major plans for this outdoor kitchen as it was one of the main requests that we received from the client. The features we were going to add into this kitchen would make our client the envy of the whole neighborhood. Some of the things we were going to throw in were a custom fit fridge, a large stainless steel sink, plenty of storage space, and for the centerpiece of the kitchen, a Heston grill packed full of features. The structure for this outdoor kitchen was made up of cinder blocks and rebar, making this process a walk in the park. We would go over the rest of the features at the end with the reveal of the rest of the yard, so stay tuned because you for sure do not want to miss it. The way we were going to incorporate the kitchen into the yard was by using similar colors and materials that were found throughout the yard as well as the addition of lighting features. Speaking of incorporation, we chose this part of the yard to place the outdoor kitchen because the kitchen inside the house was located right through the glass door. This allowed for a seamless transition from inside to outside so it felt like one continuous kitchen. Additionally, placing the outdoor kitchen in this spot next to the patio cover meant we could run power and gas through the existing structure, meaning no need to hide more conduit. Enough talking about what will be, let's make it happen. The steps for constructing the outdoor kitchen were very similar to the other features that we had done already. We started with rebar. The rebar would be used in this situation, not for shotcrete, but to help hold cinder blocks together. Instead of laying the rebar out like the pool, they shaped the kitchen out of the rebar. They planned around the appliances that would be put in as well as leaving the top clear for sliding the cinder blocks down. Cinder blocks were perfect for this situation because the kitchen had a very simple shape with no rounded edges or curves. Once they got the cinder blocks in, we had to put a pause on it because we were waiting for the tiling and the appliances to arrive. While we waited, we finally got those changes for the back wall done, so let's go see the plans. Although it took some time, we had the changes for the new and improved back wall that would blow everyone away. We went back to the drawing board and completely changed the design of the wall, although we wanted to keep the main elements such as the water feature and the lighting. The most notable change that we made was from a single piece design into a segmented design. The segments allow each part of the wall to move if the soil did shift. This would help the wall resist cracking and help remove stress from the middle. We incorporated the segments into the design of the wall by having each segment angled to give the wall a three-dimensional effect. Doubling up on the angled segments, we were going to utilize the space in between to add LED strips to get more than enough lighting for the wall. In order to implement the new design, we needed to make minor adjustments to the rebar that had already been laid. Then once the changes were made, we could resume construction on the wall. While they worked on changing the rebar, let's talk about the reasons we had this wall. The wall that was present before was a standard plain brick wall. Since the back of the yard was visible from any entrance into the yard, we wanted to make the wall stand out. On top of looking the part, we needed to make it functional. In order to get that functionality that we wanted, we added some height to the wall, as well as leaving space behind the wall for trees. We were going to put trees behind the wall to add natural extra height that didn't take the focus away from the main feature, the wall. In order to make this the jaw-dropping feature we wanted, we added the water feature, lights, and the new segmented design. Now that they had the rebar situation resolved, they could start with construction on the wall. The way the wall would be built was very similar to the outdoor kitchen island. The wall would be built out of cinder blocks because they were strong and efficient. Right after they finished up with this phase, it would be time to move on to the tiling. Laying the tiling, although delicate, was a rather simple task. We used a thin layer of mortar that we applied to the wall that acted as a glue. Then before it dried, we pressed the tiles onto the wall. We went with a chevron pattern on the tiles because of the visually appealing pattern as well as adding texture to the wall. Everything on the wall was going to be waterproofed. The tiles were going to be sealed and the LED light protected by a semi-transparent weather strip. Once that was all done, the water wall was complete. While my team was working on the pool, they noticed that the grass in the backyard had some burn marks on it. We weren't quite sure what was causing that, but my team was going to investigate and get to the bottom of this. For now, let's get back to the pool and finish it up. The pool area was almost complete. We just needed to finish up a couple of small details. We had added a handful of features that worked well with the pool. We had the lighting system that gave the pool a modern look. Then we had the connected hot tub, which allowed people to enjoy the water, even if it was chilly. Then one of my favorite features of the pool, the sleek knife edge design that surrounded the pool. We had chosen this pool edge design because it fit perfectly in a smaller backyard like this. This design only took up about a foot of room 
and was completely hidden underneath the tiling. Pulling off this style of pool edge was no easy feat as it took a lot of skill and precision, especially during the earlier stages of building the pool. If you wanted to see more on this spectacular pool edge, I posted a video going in depth on how it was built and how it worked on my YouTube channel. Getting back to the pool, to keep the yard child safe, we chose a special tile for the walkways. The tiling had a layer that consisted of sand-like particles that aided an extra grip to prevent slipping. One downside to these tiles was that, due to the special grip layer, they get dirty faster than a regular tile, although nothing a little tile cleaner can't resolve. With most of the pool area done, we could finally focus on getting the rest of the yard finished so we could do the final reveal for you guys. The appliances for the outdoor kitchen finally arrived and were ready for install. We had the dimensions when we built the island for each appliance so they fit snugly into their respective spots. To help integrate the kitchen island into the yard, we used similar tiles that could be found elsewhere in the yard, as well as a respectable amount of lights. While working on the kitchen, my team figured out that the reflection of the windows was the cause of the burning turf. We were going to get the windows tinted to help absorb the heat instead of reflecting it onto the grass. With that problem solved and the outdoor kitchen done, it's time for the reveal you all have been waiting for. Now that you guys have seen the yard, let's dive into the features. Starting with the pool, we have the oversized Baja ledge, which is a great place for kids to enjoy the water without going into the deeper section. We added in a couple Baja chairs with matching umbrellas for a great place to relax. The pool is surrounded by the knife edge styling that gives us a seamless transition from pool to land and doubles as the drainage system for the pool. Going down to the end by the larger fire pit, we have the zero edge wall that flows over and into the basin. More on the fire pit, we have the larger fireside seating that is great for large groups of people to enjoy while staying warm by the fire. Moving to the other side of the pool, the connected hot tub is equipped with lots of lights and jets to ensure a relaxing experience. Right next to the hot tub, we have the second smaller fire pit. This fire pit is placed right inside the pool and is sunken down so that when you sit, you are on the same level as those swimming in the pool. Stepping out of the fire pit, we have that massive 100 foot back wall that gives you a wonderful visual and auditory experience. The water flows down the wall as the lights put on a show, all to be enjoyed by everyone in the yard. Walking along the wall, we stop by the outdoor kitchen. The kitchen has its own lights that show off the chamfer design on the face of the island and the special tiling that we have there. Not only that, but the kitchen is equipped with everything you need in an outdoor kitchen, built-in fridge, tons of storage, a massive sink, and of course the Heston grill. The grill that we have is equipped with a rotisserie as well as a special section for searing to get that perfect crust on your steaks. At the end of the yard, we have the greenery section. This area of the yard is perfect for relaxing as we added more greenery. After construction, I talked with the client and he was delighted with this transformation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below and leave a comment on your favorite feature of the yard. My team and I are hard at work on more content for you guys to enjoy. So hit the subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications so you know about the next videos. Thank you for watching and until next time.